All right. Hey, we don't want to keep you too long here, but I wanted to ask you one more question. We've kind of already talked around, you know, what advice would you give to people sure. if you had one piece of advice, but kind of want to take a different spin on this with the last question and talk about skill sets. Is there anything, we have a lot of people in our audience that would love to have your job, would love to do what you do in the sports industry. Is there anything in particular that you feel those people should definitely work on in order to position themselves uh, to potentially do something like what you do? And that might be, you know, work on their writing skills, work on their presence on camera, um, go get a degree. <laughs> you might not agree with that one, <laughs> but is there anything in particular that you would give for advice? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste your money is my first piece of advice. Um, in this day and age, listen, man, information is accessible. You do not need to pay $150,000 for it. I'm sorry. Like, I mean, it's useful if that's what you really want, but if your passion is American history and you happen to want to be a sports broadcaster, please study American history and then try and be a sports broadcaster. <laughs> like, there's ways to interconnect things that you love. Um, but, yeah, what, what advice? I, I guess... You have to be a jack of all trades now, so that's true for any career. There's a really good book here. I would recommend people read this book. I'm, I, I loved it and recommended it for about three years, and it's called um, A Whole New World, Why Right Brainers Will Rule the Future by Daniel Pink. And Daniel Pink is Bill Clinton's former speechwriter, so he writes in a very entertaining, easy-to-digest manner. So the book is phenomenal. But um, and it's a couple years old. I read it in 2009 or eight. Um, but he was dead on because everything he predicted is happening now. And it sort of validated like who I am anyway. So I think I sort of gravitated towards it. But you know, he says that that you you have to be able to be a perceptive individual who sees the big picture, who has um, a lot of different skills and abilities. And if you don't, then you better acquire them. And then you're able to see ways that you connect those skills and abilities. And you see that it's reflected in social media. It's reflected in the, the way that society is moving and how we take in information is moving. So um, I think that that's really important. Like you have to be able to write. You have to be able to obviously, um, you know, have a good on-camera presence. You have to your your diction has to be good. Um, a lot of those things are innate. Like I said, so like some people are born tone deaf and some people are not. Some people would be great musicians. Some people would be okay musicians. You can improve depending on where you are and that skill. Some people don't have to work as hard. Some people do. Um, like me, for instance, I I, I I'm a really good teleprompter reader. The first time I read a teleprompter, it was smooth. And I was told by a pr the executive producer that I worked with at CNBC, she was like, that's very rare. It's really hard to do that. But on the flip side, if you have me on a sideline and I have no teleprompter, I'm not as good at reciting from memory, where I run into people, most people are awful with the teleprompter when they first start, but I know some people who are f phenomenal speakers. They can speak exactly the way that they write. Um, my good friend Ian Begley, who's the ESPN, I would actually recommend people watch him because he's interesting. Um, he is the ESPN New York writer. He covers the Knicks and they're done, but I think the Yankees too. And he writes really well. He's got, he's got a great voice. But if you ever watch him on some of even his web webcasts and stuff or if he's ever on TV, he speaks the way that he writes without a teleprompter. And for me, that's almost impossible. That's something I have to work very hard at. So. You know, it depends on what your natural ability is. I'd say identify your natural ability and then make it even better so you're like superstar at that. And then identify what you have trouble with and work really hard on that. And again, you know, um, just have passion. If you don't really love it or you're in it, for the, you have to keep asking yourself, do I love this and why am I doing this? And if you cannot answer that honestly and you can't answer it in the way that you should be able to answer it, then you need to, to stop. 